All right, welcome back to the Safety Net. Game number three, tied up now 1-1. We find ourselves on Expedition Lost. And before we even do intros, I have to say, like, Tiger, how did you not veto this map? <laughs> that being said, uh, we will get into intros. I'm Rifkin casting with Zombie Group tonight, spawning here in the bottom left corner of the map. It's going to be the blue Terran player from Complexity. It's Tyga. Nipper writes as the orange Zerg. It's Cats. That was a pretty good game out of Cats. I give it to him. That attack early on from Taiga, it looked scary. There was some certain panic. I'm sure even him clenching his butt a little bit. But uh, that attack ultimately did get thwarted. And from that point on, I don't think Taiga was ever really in control of that game. I mean, it really became more apparent when Cats had the Mutalisks out that he was obviously the one who was controlling the harass, the d dictating whether Taiga could get a third base or not. And I just, that hurt to watch. This is like a long, slow death. Yeah. It was. It was really uh, about those Mulusks that uh, they looked like a dangerous choice because, again, if those Marines had a, you know, if, first of all, if it, was a, if it was a surprise, which apparently it wasn't, like, cats had everything in position for that natural, they could have gotten the, uh, the mineral line. Like, imagine that, like, two medevacs, uh, 16 Marines, and a mineral line, and you have lings, uh, only, like, four banelings was targeted down, and, like, your mutas, like, that would have required even better control than what he did, you know? Because he had pretty good control. Sniping off those medevacs, saving a couple queens from death, and making it just last a long time. Could have been a lot scarier. But with yeah. that, I do wonder, like, you say, why not veto this map? Well, the last two games, Tag has been showing very different build orders. Does he have something planned specifically for this map? It's true enough, yeah, like a bit more of the aggressive, maybe not quite all in, but, well, game one for sure, but like game two not necessarily <laughs> yeah. as all in. Uh, so maybe this won't be a problem. The reason we're talking about the map in such, I guess, uh, negativity <laughs> is the nice way to phrase it, is uh, just classically speaking, we've talked to a lot of Terrans of both North America and Europe, they've all agreed this map is horrible to play on. Uh, you can't properly wall if you're natural in ways that are easy, you've got these back rocks to deal with, there's bushes everywhere, and lots of wide open engagement areas for Zerg players to just abuse, so there's pretty much nothing about this map that screams good for Terran. But we've seen some pretty good games on it. Cross managed to win on this map versus Zerg. I uh, did this really cool expand vertically instead of horizontally move. Uh, there's definitely ways to get around the map, but it's not like an auto loss for anyone who plays on it. It's just not advantageous. And ooh, this is gonna suck. Without that Reaper, uh, it cancels immediately. Not gonna waste any time. I actually uh, like that. Yeah, I was about to say, I don't know about saving that SUV. Uh, definitely not the Marine. So <clears throat> the SUV's gonna go scout. Kind of funny, but not a bad choice. <laughs> Follow me, boys. Oh, Rex. <laughs> Uh, almost, almost, but yeah, that was a nice choice by Cats, you know, I noticed he went for the pool and I was like, you know, I always talk about no one ever does it, they just go for the early queen, um, but he did it, he went for eight lings, you know, that definitely gets the cans on the command center, I mean, if you're really lucky, man, it was like TLO, right? He, like, got the cancel, got into the main, killed the reactor, killed, like, four yeah. marines, and we were like, what the? The snowball was real. Yeah, um, doesn't happen here, I'm kind of surprised that, uh, you know, with him going beyond the map, looking at those overlords, he didn't lose both Marines. Well, I guess uh, you kind of look at the way this opens. I mean, Tiger killing the overlord was definitely, I think, a little more beneficial. Because uh, if Katz was, say, all inning with an early pull or some sort of family bust, uh, that's a really critical part of the supply to lose. And uh, that's a lot of money you can't normally afford on low amounts of drones, but... Cats is playing pretty normally behind this. Taiga going for Hellion, what is looking to be possibly Banshee. No second gas, but you can still do Banshee off of it. Uh, it could very well just be a medevac though to support at the same time. Because uh, we've seen these weird Hellbat Marine pushes that have been just as scary, if not scarier, than any sort of Banshee. Yeah, that's true. Uh, maybe a Viking. Uh, the Overlord coverage did not help Taiga that last game. True oh, enough. Wait. I. I I don't know, I just, I feel like with Taiga, I'm expecting something more aggressive than, say... Oh, oh I agree. Hey, like, the Marines seem poised for, like, getting into a medevac, and, you know, maybe pairing up with, like, Hellion drops would be cool, too. And yeah, there you go, medevac. Yeah, the back rocks, I guess another advantage you could do is elevator units up there pretty easily. Yeah. Uh, you know, with Marines, you could actually take off the eyes of that third base as well, like the overlords. But... <clears throat> Whatever. Uh, Cats is going to go for another two base build, which I like. I feel like Cat, uh, Cats, uh, Zerg has been kind of, <laughs> I don't want to say blessed because I feel like it is their right to have a third base, <laughs> but they've been, 
they've been having a nice time getting these kind of okay thirds in the last season map pool and now they're kind of like oh the third's kind of far away and like you know so like which one is the best one to take so two base builds two base macro builds you know it's uh, two base longer than you would maybe like but lets you survive are a lot more common and necessary now well, I was wondering if this was going to be a full-on elevator, but looks like he'll just try and either distract with the Hellions or distract with Drop and use the Hellions. Either way, there's a pretty nice kill potential. Uh, unloads a couple Overlords for free pickings. Uh, with all the Queens being drawn back before that Medivac on the Roach is even being revealed. Tiger's still going to go for it. Runs to that natural mineral line. And a uh, nice split out of the cats initially. Only a couple drones die through this. Very good. It's, uh, almost wasted Hellions. He does note that, you know, not only is Roach one down and Roaches are out, but Speed wasn't on those wings. Uh, so I, I think that's going to be enough for him to figure out that Roaches are going to be what Cat's going to be using, at least for like a while longer. Yeah. Could uh, try and transition. Yeah, that's a pretty cute micro. I was not sure if you, how, how dedicated that was going to be uh, with that medevac, but Banshees, 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 Banshees. What do you think? This late in the game? Got a chance? It's got to be mech after this, though. Uh, but yeah, sure. I mean, they're going to be very helpful against these roaches. He saw roaches. He figured that it was probably going to be something of a roach push by gets the bunkers, and that's definitely a good call. It is the uh, the one, just the plus one upgrade for the roaches, but definitely helps. And the Hellions run back in. I do not think Katz is expecting four more Hellions. No, certainly not. In fact, the uh, pull a little bit later than last time. Still not too bad for the initial defense. This could go very bad very quickly, oh. though. As we see, oh those God. Hellions go from four kills to 13 very quickly. Oh, my God. <laughs> No, Splash damage is a hell of a drug. Dude, that was perfect to pull all the roaches back as well. Not that I think Cat's could have gotten up there and been like, nope, anyways. Uh, the bunkers, the banshees, and has to go back to droning. He is transitioning from the roach push, though. Like, the speed was on the way, is like, since we finished talking about it. And then, of course, that spire is also on the way. But, like, all, this, all of this on the back of only two bases, that they're still not done. Well, how much can the Banshee do? There's a lot of Queens out, so damage isn't the issue, it is detection. So, interesting choice to pull the drones immediately. We do have the Overseer on the way. Yeah, I think he realizes he wanted to be next to the Queens <laughs> when the Overseer finishes. Uh, awkwardness, though, is that the Banshee is fast enough he was able to keep up with them, stutter around. So, sees the Spire timing, sees a couple of free drone kills on the natural, too. Seven kills, eight kills on top of how many so far? 28? This is... It's getting kind of close to that tilt factor. Like, oh my god, I just lost so many drones. Yeah. I've been exactly on a ball in economy before that. The third is up for grabs until the mutas come out and kill it. Just take a lot of health off of it, and otherwise the banshees really aren't going to be that more uh, that useful. Does cats yeah. know that it's mech? Well, we'll find out soon. Mutalists luckily are good versus initial mech. You know, there's only like one or two thwarts out. Um, what I am worried about though is if he waits, if he's too complacent to deal with the Banshee, even if it dies to the Mutalisks, getting this base to even like half health suddenly drops, suddenly run bys are a lot more effective. Mm -hmm. And uh, we do have another Banshee heading towards the main. We got some Hellions, possibly turns into Hellbats once they land. Oh, and that Viking, hey. Yeah, yeah you're right. Got about two kills. <clears throat> The bailing mess, though, tells me that Cat still hasn't figured it out. The Banshees being at the timing they are, you know, with our god mode vision, we're like, yeah, that's kind of light, this, you know, not start your sim and invest in the Banshees, so. Be a good guess, but Cat's uh, obviously has been dealing with so much harass. Um, unless banelings are actually as part of his his mech plan. Well, We've seen them do kind of well against the Hellbats. And then exactly, they'll take punches. out the buffer for that mech army, right? Like, they'll, uh, they've got their role to play. Nine more drones died of the Banshee, though, so that was kind of worth it. He does have the Medivac poised and waiting, didn't try and run it immediately because he knew the uh, Mutalisk would be right there. So, I mean, to start this game off, whether it's mech, whether it's bio, I mean, 37 workers dead for somebody who was so late to the third. This is absolutely struggle blow to cats. Yeah. Uh, I mean, he's getting Roach Speed and Centrifugal Hooks. You know, no more mutas, so maybe that is his plan. I mean, the first composition that Terrans usually get, unless they're playing a specific style, is Hellbat Thor. Uh, when tanks are coming to play, focus fire on the Bane Links can really make them worthless. Yeah, so the Hellings really don't get much done. Uh, quick cleanup out of cats. I do want to note we have the Impact Corruptor in play. Yeah. <laughs> uh, trademark uh, name. <laughs> trademark base trade TV. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> trademark impacts. Kind of weird. Right, then That's so much total biscuit. Then that, yeah, <laughs> I, I I know you wanna you know that's a whole other can of worms. Uh, the nice thing about playing mech though is you can play the slow game. 
you don't have to feel rushed to push out and expand. You can goody it up and take one base slowly at a time and be like impossible to break. But I think unlike most players that Taiga might be accustomed to playing against, again, it's kind of cool to see him transition uh, into it is cats. Whether he initially prepares for this or not, for one way or another, it's not hard for him to adjust. You know, seeing this many Hellions, again, this has got to be a clear sign that it's probably yeah. mech. Uh, in fact, playing the drones a little bit, yeah, really scared of this attack. Uh, the Roaches can deal with the Hellions, though. That's the nice part. Yeah, it has to be clear. I think he's known for, like, uh, past couple of minutes, but uh, the centrifugal hoax was still kind of... Maybe just figured, like, why not? Usually in mech games, you go for a very long time, so we see... Decisions like that not play as huge of a role as if you say went swarm host against bio, like not well, in the way that Snoo does it, but like initially, like the first eight minutes, and it's kind of hard to switch out of. Well, we brought up impact a moment ago, but let's not forget, like even against mech, we'll see players like impact trying to do those like bailing run buys, to, like thirds and fourths. It's true. So it could still be an investment worth having, uh, especially with some bailings being made. Again, for cats, it's not like this is 50 banelings that's getting countered by tank shots. It's Eh, 10 to 11 for the time being with speed to just use however he likes. I actually, yeah. I kind of like the idea behind it, but uh, Taiga is sort of bunkering in. He's getting a lot of turrets down. Uh, one of the greatest weaknesses of mech is you are really slow to respond to any sort of harass. And if Mutalists are diving through your third and your natural, you're just not going to get there in time. So the best thing to do would be throw down just a ton of freaking turrets. Mm. Mm. Uh, we do have, uh, you know, we talked about Cross earlier and, it's, you know, the Taiga expanding the same way since. I think Zergs have just, you know, they've all agreed to take the horizontal base. You're always pushing towards your opponent's base. Oh, uh, cool. Taiga actually not doing it, going the long way, which, you know, if he just went up, he could be, like, down on a ramp, a nice position for the tanks, sieging up that third, as opposed to taking a fight in open ground. Yeah, the Bailings go up mostly on the tanks and not the Hellbats, so a little unfortunate, but they do a lot of damage to that tank line. So oh. as the Roaches focus fire down the last couple of them, the Thors are dealing a ton of damage, but if there's nothing to buffer for the Thors, then who cares? Taiga loses his army. Wow. Oh, that was the... I feel like that was a really bad push. Like, this is a great idea. He's playing it fine up until that push. That's <laughs> the turn to take out the Overseers, actually. That does take away the vision from the, the bushes, but... Can two tanks hold? That's really all he's got. A couple of reinforcements, even the Vikings are in line. This looks pretty dire, uh, but I think he will be able to hold this. Looks like it. Uh, the expense of a lot of SCVs, both of the Roaches and the tank fire. Uh, I think luckily, though, died. like you're playing mech, the SCV losses aren't that bad. Uh, you, you're looking yeah. at the gas more than anything else, and mules can help mandate that loss. He did get two extra command centers already, so <laughs> five CPs at a time. Uh, oh, this one's becoming a planetary, uh, or uh, an orbital. Surprised, I thought that they were both going to become planetary somewhere else on the map, but I guess limited building space in the main, can't put them over here. <laughs> mm, yeah, true. I really wish he had done the way that uh, Cross was pushing, but oh well. Doesn't even get the gold base, I think it's like, kind of like a slap in the face. <laughs> I pushed towards that base, ran past it, and died. Well, actually, weirdly enough, if he had gone through the north instead of the south, he might have actually, yeah, been able to kill it, so that kind of sucks. Uh, I'm waiting for these taste lopes to die, man. These bug me. They're too jittery. Oh. oh. People who kill things in games that are necessary are the worst. Kill I know. <laughs> You're like, kill the rocks? Who cares? But kill a critter? No way. No. We'll kill a human? Who cares? But kill, a, like, a dog in a movie? Oh, my God. It's sad, though. It is sad. So you go. Alright, uh, Jones <laughs> killed. Uh, that needs to clean up pretty quickly. Uh, I am waiting to see where the expansion does come down, though, because at this point for Taiga, I mean, his his base down here to the south is creeped up, the base of the north is closer to Cats and almost creeped up. It's kind of a scary situation for him, because there is no best place to expand to. Oh, I was just going to put that in the main, I guess, for mules. The thing is, you know, if he had not lost his army, however he did it, based, you know, bottom line did not lose that army and he was pressuring somewhere however he was you know that mirror transition might not have happened you know because it did seem like such a good idea because he was so low on just units in general that adding in thors would have been difficult he would have been able to take a easier fourth i think you know a lot <clears throat> under less pressure and it might not have been a bad map for mech but now as he can't get a fourth it looks really terrible <laughs> it's like what it what yeah. is your game well, the nice thing is, uh, normally we're relying so heavily on Thors to deal with the Mutalus count, but when you've got highly upgraded Vikings, and a lot of them, you can actually uh, tango not too badly, especially with one or two missile turrets underneath them. So, 
any location that he can take these Vikings to defensively because there's so many turrets scattered will be a good fight. These Mutas are really more dangerous, I think, out in the open than they are for their typical harass, but Katz is actually mining off the gold. Five bases deep, one of them being the gold, this is kind of crazy to let this go off. And almost, I'd say, very dangerous for Taiga, who has turtled up, to let this go on. In fact, if he waits too long, it could then I'll be borderline game ending. Yeah. And it is kind of important to note in, the, in this day and age, I guess, right? Where, like, battle cruisers and mass raven seems to be the better way to go. That he did remax on the same composition that he lost, so... Yeah, without, it's really not the like, oh my god, how is he ever gonna lose this army? It's like, well, the same thing could happen again. <laughs> well, it also does it without a second armory this whole time, so we don't have any vehicle plating. It, it, to me, this has looked like a ground army from start to finish, but... Uh, oh, Hellbats are not gonna get to unload. They are picked off pretty much immediately, but this does open cats in the middle. He's going to lose the gold base for this. So, for Tiger's push, this is a really important base to take down. Yeah. Oh my Whoa, god. Whoa, mass beamlings. Yep. <laughs> Notice all these beamlings. They're going to clash right into the tanks. Who cares about the Hellbats? They're going on everything they can. But there's a lot of SCVs on the front line, so repairing is not out of the question. Yeah, I don't know if that was... I mean, they're really great bailing hits against Mac. They took out a lot of tanks. I, I mean, that was like half the tanks that went down. So it, I wouldn't call that was bad, but they weren't great. <laughs> it was funny to see, for sure. Um, oh, Taiga, like, he's opening up not only... Yeah, I finally see those rocks breaking down. Yeah, I keep forgetting there's a rock towers because nobody uses them like that, but uh, Cat sneaks around anyways already, heading off here with the roaches. There's nothing to defend, not even a planetary fortress. Mutalus might strike into those pencil turrets, and this could become a base trade very quickly. Mm, In fact, that looks to be the case. Yeah, uh, not a whole lot of tanks for our coming out on the backside for a, a Taiga. Two tanks meet the roaches, and they will die. The mutas are getting through the natural. Nope, not, not quite. It's not really an opportunity to turn around and come to fan. Like, he's kind of got to keep going with what he has. He might send the Hellions back, but that's not going to cut it versus Roaches. Just keep that with the army. Like, why bother? Yeah, that does seem like an odd choice. Well, desperate times oh, go for desperate measures. The... Ah, because yeah, he built on the rock tower. Yeah. Right. <laughs> well, you can go up Katz's back, uh, <laughs> back to her. <laughs> <laughs> Go towards the phrasing. Uh, he will chase down the drones and some nice barbecue will be had as uh, these will get taken out. But I, I feel like Katz is in just such a better spot. Uh, he's winning the base trade. Yeah, okay, Jaren can lift up and run, but not really, not this late. The SVs are blocking the army from getting up because they're stupid and trying to repair stupid helpful SCVs. Idiots. Sorry, I'm bothering you with my helping. Yeah, <laughs> sorry for healing you, God. Uh, looks like the Hellings were all removed though, and this is kind of scary because now he doesn't really have that same buffer for the army. I though, with the Vikings, if these don't go down to something stupid like a Spore Crawler, the Vikings will win the Mutalisk War. Tanks well positioned with the Thors could win the Roach War, and if it comes, if it ever comes down to an army versus army fight, I think Taiga takes that fight every single time. But that might not be the case. Uh, he could build a command center on this side of the map, he could build a refinery, I mean, it's, it is a base trade, Ace 1, Ace 2, boys and girls, because, uh, that's, well, <laughs> he's lost everything at home. Nothing got out, no no floating buildings, nothing. Yeah, yeah. You know, cats never really got up to a very big uh, Oh, don't bank. leave this, don't leave this. Ooh, it's very important, very, very important. Well, it's a slow mech, Arby, it is actually I, very important. I, I, no, like seriously, I just, it just feels like, mm, you know, we cast, I think, two, three games now where it's a ring around the rosy of expansions with the Zerg player. I just feel like it's gonna happen again. Oh, the Roach Burrow! I don't know if it's not approaches to really make it worthwhile. It doesn't Awkward. Have yeah, it doesn't have tunneling claws either, uh, so there's no moving in everything to position. But there's no scanning at the same time. There's actually nothing Tiger could do to even if he saw the roaches burrow, he just kinda has to sit and wait. Cats can pick up, pop out, burrow, you know. Yeah. Zerg's are kind of the king of base traits. Uh, I, everyone, everyone always says like, you know, don't base trade to terror, they can float your buildings, but uh, yo, Tiger's on creep. He has to build something else pretty darn quick. He's got a couple of buildings back at home, but those are going down very, very soon. He's on creep, so it's not like he can just slap down a uh, supply depot anywhere he wants. I think Cats is about to win. Yep. Beats the army, gonna beat the buildings. Yeah, GG. <laughs> Takes the series. He'll go to the winner's match. He'll fight against States. And a best of three over there, but... As with all things Base Trade TV, we do the 